Almost missed the landing zone there. How you doing? I'm gonna make some medieval bags out of this uh, blue buckskin. I don't know what kind of blue you would call that, but uh, buckskin. I think people will like that. I can only make two of them. Buckskin's actually hard to get. Believe it or not, it's hard to get your hands on it. Infinite complexity and infinite diversity. You know, a lot of people lose their minds trying to fill their heads with facts. Kind of the most simple analogy that I've ever thought up, and it's kind of blatantly obvious to anybody with a half a brain, is that people will worry about all the minutiae of the house. Yeah? Their house or some other house. The walls, the wiring, how it's decorated. You know, every little thing. All the little nuances. And that's kind of how they approach life if they want understanding. It's unfortunate that a lot of people don't want really deep understanding of the nature of the universe because it doesn't really pay the bills and it, you know, it doesn't make you rich and doesn't get you a vacation, doesn't get you a family, doesn't get you any of that stuff. But like nut wards, for example, are full of a lot of people that are highly intelligent and their heads are full of a lot of facts. And people try to clutter their brains up with facts and none of those empirical points actually transcend death because they're actually part of existential consciousness. And the real truth of the matter is that given enough wisdom, just a little bit, you would ask yourself the question, well, I don't really need to know about all the stuff of the house, the rooms and the furniture and whatnot and how it's decorated and what kind of layout and what's the yard like, so on and so forth. I only need to know what's the nature of the foundation. If you understand the source, you can understand everything else. There have been many movies actually made over the past few decades where everything is really confusing. There's all this minutia and complexity. And then they get to the source of something and they find out, oh, it's just so simple. These people are too busy, they can't see the forest for the trees. And the closer you get to Rome, the fewer the roads are that lead to the heart of Rome. You know, the further away you are from Rome, everything is kind of, in a peripheral sort of way, leads to Rome. But the closer you get, the more simple things become. And uh, there's only ever been two foundations, and this is not about physics versus metaphysics, really, because they're both one and the exact same thing. There's only ever been two foundations of ultimate reality postulated, one by atomists slash materialists, that is bumping particles, the other one based upon the ether. But ultimately, in natural order, you know, I, I kind of make the joke, kind of a joke, that Mother Nature, not that there is such a person, you know, it's like a hairy armpit chick with muddy feet and a hemp skirt. She certainly doesn't have a calculator. And everything is very, very simplex pressure mediation. If you actually understand one simple set, the conjugate nature of reality, you can actually understand everything. The same is true of photography. Uh, the most famous photographs are ones that either stop you, draw you in, or push you away. The net result is the same. Even if you're repulsed by the image, it's famous because it's repulsive and it shocks you, for example. There are war photographs like that. If it draws you in because it's beautiful or mysterious, same net effect if you're actually going by it and it causes you to stop. You know, it creates a, uh, you know, a diversion of your attention and of your spirit. You know, the same net result is true. So far as the conjugate nature of the universe, which I've spoken about endlessly, magnetism and dielectricity, one is force in motion, the other one is inertia and acceleration. Magnetism is centrifugal. Dielectricity is centripetal. They both have inverse geometries. The dielectric geometry is exactly like this little hourglass. It's a hyperboloid. Yeah. By the way, a vortex is just a half a torus, but the negative image of a half a torus is like a half of a hyperboloid. The negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid. The negative image of a hyperboloid is a torus, i.e. a donut shape. But this is, everybody's fascinated by vortex. So what's a vortex? Well, I don't know. It's kind of like tornadoes and, you know, we see them galactic all the way down to water spouts and, you know, you pull the plug on the drain in your bathtub and 
When I was, you know, growing up, you'd pull the plug on the, the bathtub. It was fascinating watching the vortex form, and, and uh, everybody's always fascinated by vortex. Oh, what is a vortex? Isn't that a negative pressure acceleration towards counter space? Of course, you can't take the analogy too far in the case of the bathtub, since the water is actually going down the drain. But it's going down the drain due to this phenomenon called gravity. And gravity, of course, is the inverse of force. Gravity is increasing inertia and acceleration towards counter space. Two objects never accelerate towards one another, rather towards a null pressure point between both. This is exactly like the sand. Of course, in the case of the true uh, field hyperboloid, the sand would actually be coming in from both sides and absolutely vanishing at the center. But we know, of course, a regular sand hourglass doesn't work that way. Fear and anger are force and heat require a burning. This is the reason why hate and evil can never be quenched. You know, there's never any ultimate satisfaction in hate and anger and evil. It's exactly like this fire, even though it's not a real fire. It constantly has to be fed. You know, it does make you warm. I mean, you know, you could, uh, some people are warmed by the hate in their heart. And uh, it is a fact that some people live off of their hate. It does give them an energy, kind of like caffeine. But it only works for a short time. There's only so much caffeine you could drink, right, before it actually burns you out and zombifies you. I mean, like, if you ever take a mega dose of caffeine, which I certainly have more than a few times in life, but it can't be fulfilling. This is exactly like magnetism. Force requires heat and burning. Love and wisdom are centripetal. They're cooling. You know what a cold cathode is? When you heat up, when the anode heats up, the cathode cools. By the way, the answer for uh, why uh, it's cooler in the moonlight, you know, the big mystery, I post that video using FLIR, forward-looking infrared, is a cold cathode effect. Type in cold cathode effect to give you the answer. So love and wisdom are inertial. They're cooling. They can be fulfilled. True rest is always acceleration towards a rest point or a null point. That rest or null point analogous would analogously would be right here at the center of this hourglass, i.e. the hyperboloid, right here. Yeah, right there. You can't take this analogy too far because the sand goes from one side to the other. You got to flip it, it goes from that side to the other side. The true hyperboloid of energy, the sand representing the force vectors of magnetism, which is the dielectric field, they actually vanish at the null point right here. Then the question must be asked, why is there anything at all rather than nothing? And then you have to go into a two or three hour long discussion of uh, emanationism. Force, of course, is modulation. Yes. Magnetism, by definition, is ignorance. Magnetism equals amperage. Dielectricity equals voltage. It is the case on AC power lines. Yeah, in your backyard, if there's uh, been an issue at a substation that happens or a lightning strike, Sometimes this has been observed, there's even YouTube videos of it, of a lightning strike on the power lines, which is an increase, a massive increase in voltage. The power lines will actually swing together, actually decrease the space between them, because it is a circuit. When there's an increase in amperage, which is equal to magnetism, i.e. force, there is a heating of the lines, and the AC power lines will actually spread apart. Isn't it interesting how that conjugate relationship works? Amperage, which equals magnetism, equals force and centrifugal vector. Dielectricity is centripetal, is a move towards counter space or the array. You can either say counter space or you can say the erasure of space. That's like saying tomato versus tomato. Force, of course, is modulation. Magnetism is exactly like ignorance. If magnetism is exactly like ignorance, and ignorance is in the uh, Sanskrit and the Pali, the word for this is primordial ignorance, not conventional or terrestrial or psychophysical ignorance. Is the term avidya. It's avidya in Pali or avidya in Sanskrit, same term. It's A, which means opposite to or inverse of vidya, which is light. Let me see, let's figure this out. Well, illumination would be akin to magnetism, where light itself would be akin to dielectricity. Ignorance is illumination. Nobody ever sees light. They, what they see is illumination. Like, if there's only two things in the universe, the sun and yourself, if you have your back to the sun, you're in a, a, um, 
a spacesuit, for example, and back to the, and everything is just as pitch pitch black as possibly is. Like, well, you know, the sun is right behind you, say a few million miles away. So now you're able to be really close to it without burning up, for example. You don't see any light. The manifestation of light is due to the modulation, i.e. the frequency whereby which it must necessitatively manifest because no human being sees light. Like an invisible person, for example, would be completely blind because they would be transparent. There would be no dielectric primitivity making up their existence. Like, Not that there ever could be an invisible person, but they would never see light because light would never manifest. Nobody ever sees light, whether it be a living human being or a theoretical invisible person, because we only see illumination. So that being the case, therefore illumination is a vidya, then therefore light would be vidya, i.e. wisdom, an acceleration towards a rest point. Wouldn't that be the same thing? Now, Imagine, of course, energy being the grains of sand in this hourglass. The hourglass, this type of hourglass doesn't work that way. Imagine all the, the grains of sand actually vanish at the null point here. The sand uh, disappears at the rest. Here, there is no space. Here, of course, there is space. Now, remember the negative image of this hyperboloid is a torus. The negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid. And by the way, this is where space comes from. Torus, the after effect of a divergent magnetic field, is a negative image of pure potential. Pure potential is no different than saying the ether, is no different than saying energy, no different than saying inertia. The negative image of pure potential is pure impotency. Well, what would pure impotency be in the case of fields? It would be this neat little thing called space, which is not a thing at all. I will remind you once again that the only time Nikola Tesla foams at the mouth is the idea, not literally foams at the mouth, is the idea that space has properties and it is something you could warp space. Of course, we've all been brainwashed by this relativity nonsense that we could warp space and time, which is completely ridiculous and absurd, illogical and irrational. Of course, time is not a thing either. Time is a measure of masses and magnitudes. Every ancient culture, by the way, said time was the number four. The only number that doesn't exist in the first five digits of the Fibonacci sequence is that number four. Chinese, Japanese, the word uh, four, which equals time, also means death, because anything that experiences time necessitatively must experience death. The first five digits of the Fibonacci sequence, by the way, are one, one, two, three, five. The only number missing there is four. The universe is starting to get more and more simple. We could apply everything of knowledge, existence, everything we see in nature to correctly understanding inertia, i.e. dielectricity, versus force, versus amperage, versus fear, fear and anger, a heating, a burning, something that which must perpetually be fed, can never be fulfilled. Like a fire, fire by definition can never be fulfilled. You constantly have to keep throwing logs on it. Constantly, right? Now it does warm you, but it can't be fulfilled. There's no such thing as fulfillment in a desire. Isn't desire an evil ultimately? Because even the Bible says that it's excess, and by the way, certain numbers are words. The word 666 in Greek is excisius. In Latin, the word is excisius. In English, it's almost exactly the same, excess. Every ancient metaphysics said excess is evil, evil is excess, excess is evil. Desire for things, your, your fear, your anger, the force, the amperage. By the way, voltage doesn't kill. It's amperage. You can get shocked by two million volts and uh, you know one one thousandth of an amp, you'll be fine, really. Uh, amperage is that which kills. I mean, it's kind of like uh, analogously uh, voltage or dielectricity be akin to a super fine needle, which not that anybody should do that. I mean, you could, you could pass it directly through a person's being, not through their heart, all the way from the front of their body to the back. Survive it, no issues. Probably be released from the hospital the same day. Amperage would be like that same needle, except about the size of, you know, about like that. No one's going to survive. <laughs> no one's going to survive it. Inertia is rest. Dielectricity is wisdom. What's the opposite of wisdom? Is it not the case that wisdom is light? But nobody ever sees light. Light would be vidya. And by the way, not only is vidya wisdom in ancient Pali and Sanskrit, it also too means light. Avidya means ignorance. But doesn't this also imply centrifugal, that which is parted from itself, i.e. the good, attributional side of the good? 
light versus illumination, wisdom versus ignorance. When one implies illumination, they're also, too, implying light. But light and illumination are not the same thing. Shadow is no different than space. A shadow is an absence of light, but a shadow is not a noun. Illumination is not light. It is the extrinsic nature of light. When you have this, then that is present. Illumination, moving away from itself. Now, of course, I'm illuminated right now by these two lights over my head, but what you're seeing is the illumination, i.e. the frequency and the dielectric, dielectric permittivity of my skin, actually going back to the camera, but you're not seeing light itself, i.e. the energy matrix, which of course makes up the disturbance and the frequency. Even liberation itself is wisdom. Wisdom, in the case of uh, Yoga Sutta Patanjali's, the Upanishads, the Nikayas, the definition of Nirvana, Bhavanyarodhan the Bandham, the subjugation of becoming. Becoming is modulation. Modulation is no different than saying magnetism, is no different than saying centrifugal force. Space is dilution. Space is literally an impotency of pure potential, i.e. energy. Space, of course, is no different than ignorance. It is desire. It is, of course, more matter. Magnetism is destructive energy. It is force. This fire is destructive energy. It must not only be perpetually fed, just like fear and anger and force. It is the hot cathode. It is not the cold anode. Uh, cold cathode, excuse me, the hot anode versus the cold cathode. Dielectricity would be the cathodic effect or the cooling down, the lack of perturbation. Anytime there's a spatial vector of perturbation, there's a heating up. That would be the hot anode versus the cold cathode. So the hot anode would be amperage, it would be magnetism, and the cold cathode would be rest, a movement towards inertia and acceleration. The universe becomes more and more and more and more simple. This is seeing the forest for the trees. This is the nature of natural order itself. All of these things that we experience and think and feel, the very premise of metaphysics, the very premise of embodiment, ignorance, suffering, suffering is modulation, false identity, seeing self and what is not self, perpetually feeding desires like feeding this fire. Wouldn't that be the hot anode versus the cold cathode? You ever taken a rubber band and stretch it across your lip? It gets quite hot. You're actually applying force to the rubber band and stretching it out. It's kind of like taking peanut butter and spreading it thin, right? It's really hot. Take the same rubber band as it's hot against your lip. Try that. Cut a rubber band in half and stretch it across your lip. Take that same rubber band and bring it back to its rest point. You'll notice it will cool. It will refrigerate. By the way, this same principle using gases is exactly how a refrigerator works. So refrigeration, cold cathode, dielectricity, movement towards increasing inertia and acceleration, destructive energy, is, of course, constructive matter. Force, of course, is dilution. If force is dilution, then this means magnetism and feeding desires is ignorance, is the nature of suffering, which then necessitatively, using retroductive logic, and very simple logic for that matter, means that increasing inertia and acceleration, i.e. concentration, the opposite of dilution, is, of course, necessitatively wisdom, the path of liberation. Self-proximity is wisdom. True energy is at rest. It has no vector. True energy would be analogously, not that this is a perfect analog, would be right here at the center. Because out here we can measure time on a regular sand hourglass. Okay, we have positive time here and we have negative time here, but time is not real. Here we have no time. Nobody measures sand passing through an hourglass right here. We look at this lobe and we look at this lobe. We're never looking here. What if in the case of true energy, the sand takes from both lobes of this hyperboloid and vanishes at the null point and then you actually have rest? That would be a perfect analogy to liberation, to wisdom, to self-proximity. This is the very premise of theurgy, Apophaticism via negativa. Yoga chitta vritti 
liberation is the ending of perturbation of the new sort of mind or spirit. Bhavanyaroda nabhanam. Nirvana means the subjugation of becoming. Force in motion, inertia and acceleration. Life, of course, is force. It is expansion and, of course, is conjoined with desires and ignorances and seeing ourselves as that which is not ourselves and suffering due to identification with that which is perpetually in flux and not that which we are. The most repeated phrase in ancient Pali and the Nikayas, which is quite voluminous, most repeated phrase over and over and over and over again is Isakaya Namisata. The body is not the soul. Nama Rupa Anatati. Psychophysical is not the soul. This, of course, is just via negativa. This is shrinking the toroidal sphere of ignorance, desires, and suffering. Everything collectively becomes really, really simple. What about the apple? The apple is actually shaped exactly like a torus. So it's like, well, no, an apple is generally a lot larger at the top than it is at the bottom of the apple, i.e. near the stem. That actually truly represents, uh, it's kind of like an oblate torus. And the reason why it's like that is the exact same reason why there's phase disparity in the case of a magnetic field, which is why seeds are exposed, uh, I mean, excuse me, experience different uh, results in growing versus South Pole versus North Pole. The meat of the apple and the apple itself is a torus. That is the meat that we feed on, which of course feeds life. We desire more apples, we get hungry tomorrow, we need another apple. What would be the definition of rest or inertia or the ether relative to the apple? Well, if you cut it in half, it doesn't matter how you cut it in half. There's a little hollow spots right at the center of the apple. And right there is the seed. That would be the definition of rest, inertia. Those seeds, given growth, being fed, just like this fire, of course, is fed, necessitatively manifests another apple tree, right? Force in motion, inertia, and acceleration. The conjugate geometry of the entire universe, and absolutely everything in the universe can be applied to that conjugate geometry paradigm. Fear, desire, anger, ignorance, love, wisdom, Force, motion, light, illumination, rest, inertia, everything, space. What is space? The volume of the torus is space, the negative image of pure potential, i.e. absolute impotency. No different than a shadow. Space is no different than a shadow. A shadow is not a thing. Shadow is an absence of potential if we actually ascribe light and illumination as potential and the extrinsic attribute of potential then pure impotency of pure potential, which is light, would be a shadow, which is not a thing. But neither is space. Space is no more a thing than it is a shadow. Space! Yet we've all been brainwashed for this idea of science fiction garbage, bending space, warping space, blah, 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 blah. Totally untrue from the premise of true metaphysics and rational logic vis-a-vis -vis Tesla and others. Natural order is absolute simplicity that is jaw-dropping, unific, which is an obtuse word that nobody uses anymore, and extremely simple. Nature screams out to everybody how simple she is at absolutely every level, but people really, really, really are that blind. Inertia is concentration of energy, which of course is decentration of matter. Matter, space, the hot anode, magnetism and force, just like this fire must be perpetually fed and it can never be fulfilled. Because anything that has a beginning in time has an end in time and is necessitatively not an essence nor that which we truly are. Natural order is incredibly simple, yet people lack the vision to see the incredibly simple nature of natural order itself. I hope you liked this video. If you did, you ever want to email me, my email's in the description below. Any donations always warmly welcome, even if it's a buck or two. Or you can tell me how much you hated this video. Whatever makes you happy. Lux Everitas.